the most embarrassing thing you did as a kid that you think about to this day? Story 1. I was in a small restaurant with my dad and brother, and when I went to the bathroom, I decided to belt out the chorus to Weird Al's The White Stuff in full volume, thinking the bathroom would contain my vocals. I walked out realizing the restaurant was quiet, and when I sat down, my dad goes, What the hell was that? And when he saw the confusion on my face, he proceeded to explain to me that the entire restaurant heard me. Story 2. When I was seven, me and my family were visiting Edinburgh, and we decided to go to the botanical gardens. While there, I was drawn to these giant lily pads. I suddenly had memories of watching frogs jump on smaller-sized lily pads and thought it would be an excellent idea to try and hop onto one to see if it would hold my weight. Safe to say it did not, and it was a long, wet walk back to the car after an embarrassing explanation to the managers of the gardens as to why one of their giant lily pads had a child-shaped hole in it. Story 3. I pissed myself in primary school in year 5, UK. I was so shy I didn't want to put my hand up and ask to go to the toilet, so I tried to hold it in until home time, which was only a few minutes away, but to no avail. Once the floodgates were open and there was no going back, I decided that the best course of action would be to look as nonchalant as possible, and just maybe, no one would notice. So I stood there, silently gazing out of the window and poured water myself, trying to appear as though I didn't have a care in the world. Obvs, that was a cow plan of action. And of course, everyone flipping noticed. Just when I thought I'd reached the climax of mortification, however, when the whole class was watching me pour out the water myself in stunned silence, the very sweet teacher said, Bonnie, and my flipping mouth decided to blurt out, I am being sick. The teacher muttered, you're being sick. And I responded defiantly with pour out the water streaming very obviously down my legs and all over my white or yellow socks and into my shoes. Yes. It's not we. I'm being sick. Good times. Story 4. Back in 8th grade, I had just come back from lunch break and was sitting down for science class. Had been holding in a fart for a few minutes and wasn't too worried about it. Then the urge to sneeze struck. And before you know it, I was sat in the middle of the class. Everyone silent and every pair of eyes on me as I came to the terms with the fact that I had just done the loudest public fart known to man. Of course, I tried to cover it up by saying, What? Why are you all staring at me? Teacher even helped me out by shifting attention away. God bless her soul. I still have nightmares to this day. Story 5. I told this story years ago on Reddit and got the tag Santa Molester. But one Christmas when I was about five, six-ish years old, I was in line at the mall to sit on Santa's lap. I decided that I wanted to give him money to go towards feeding the reindeer. And since I was five, six, that money was basically a handful of nickels and dimes and probably a couple pennies. Not much, maybe like 40 to 50 cents in change. My turn came up, and I sat on Santa's lap, and I tried to hand him the money, but it fell out of my hand, and right down onto Santa's crotch. I dove right in there trying to pick up the money with my little boy hands, and Santa hastily said, very hastily, Oh, ho, ho, it's okay. I'll get it later, and put my on the ground to send me on my way. So yeah, I Santa Claus, and indeed, it still haunts me to this day. Story 6. In elementary school, I used to pick my nose, drop my pencil by accident, then wipe my boogers into the carpet when my hand was already down there to pick up my pencil. Two problems with my foolproof plan. One, I wasn't discreet at all with the actual nasal excavation too. I did this cow like every five minutes edit. The elusive carpeted classroom was in Utah, USA. Why is this so flipping exotic to y'all? Story seven, I liked this boy in my art class and found out through some mutual friends that he lived a few blocks from me. So instead of just talking to him at school like a sane person, what I decided I'd get his attention by sneaking out of my house at 4 a.m. with a big bag of garbage, walking all the way to his house, throwing the garbage all over his lawn, then ringing his doorbell and running back home. The next day at school, I asked him if anything weird happened at his house last night. When he said, yeah, I revealed that I was the one who pranked his family last night. He just awkwardly said, oh, okay, and didn't talk to me for a few months after that. What the fudge was I thinking? Story 8. In fourth grade, my mom took me back to the school after hours because she had some PTO meeting or something of the sort. With my boredom peaking, a brilliant idea popped into my head. I claimed that I needed to get something out of my desk in my classroom and was allowed to go grab it, which gave me a few seconds in the classroom all by myself. When I got into the room, I immediately grabbed a piece of paper and wrote, I love you, Kelsey, and placed it in Kelsey's desk, the girl I'd had a crush on and had never spoken to and left. Next day... I get into the classroom and everyone is surrounding Kelsey's desk. They are trying to figure out who wrote the letter. So naturally, I play along and try to decipher the handwriting to figure out this mystery crush who couldn't even spell her name right. Worst, or best part, was that my teacher knew that I was in the room by myself the day before. She never gave me up, but I know she knew. 
Story 9. My mom took my brother and I to the circus when I was about five or six. We got slushy drinks during the circus that were pretty frozen. Trying to break up a big piece of ice, I jammed the straw to the bottom of the styrofoam cup, putting a hole in the bottom and getting cherry slushy all over me. I started to cry when everybody was quiet watching the, the tightrope walker do his thing. Here I am screaming, covered in red stuff and a spotlight shines on me. A lot of people gasped, thinking something really bad was happening. They stopped the show for a few minutes. The only thing more red than my shirt was my mom's face. I still think about that from time to time and call my mom to apologize sometimes when I'm drunk. Story 10. I was on the bus to school and started not feeling too good, and the guy sitting next to me told me I looked pale. Next thing I knew, I threw up all over the seat back in front of me. Oatmeal from breakfast everywhere. When I was done puking my brains out, I looked over at my neighbor and delivered a legendary one-liner. Well, that's what I had for breakfast. He moved to the seat next to me. Story 11. Went on my first date at around 13 to Finding Nemo with a girl and her friend when it first came out in theaters. Ate a bunch of popcorn with a huge soda and ended up sitting through the last 30 minutes of the movie having to pee so, so bad. Being an awkward early teen, I didn't want to get up and awkwardly crawl through the packed movie theater so just endured the pain. Afterwards, I ran to the packed bathroom and waited in line behind a ton of other men awkwardly for a urinal. Finally, one opened up in my line and I rushed up to it only to realize that the base of it was at my crotch level. So I basically had to pee upwards to get it in the urinal. I had to pee so bad and felt so awkward about the whole situation that I started peeing, but didn't want to be even more weird and looked down at where I was peeing in front of all the other men waiting to pour out the water. So I just kind of stood on my tiptoes and stared at the wall, initially getting it in the bowl, but then becoming unaware of where my pee was going. I ended up spraying the front of the urinal, getting my entire lower front covered and pour out the water bouncing off the contaminated urinal and soaking the floor and probably the guy's feet next to me. Upon finishing my giant pee, I realized the cow I was in as I had to meet my date and her friend outside the bathroom, along with walk past the line of guys waiting to use the urinal behind me. I ended up rapidly pretending to spray myself with water at the sink and then walked out with my sweatshirt on, but with my hands in the front pockets, stretching it down, trying to cover up my crotch and upper thighs. I rapidly said bye without a hug and hopped in the front seat of my mom's minivan and rode home smelling like pee. It was awkward. Story 12. When I was about seven or eight, my dad had custody of me and my sister every other weekend. My mom would drop us off with him Fridays, and he'd always take us to this nice shopping area where we'd go buy some babysitter's club books and have dinner. We always parked in the same parking garage, and I always ran ahead three floors down the stairwell because I liked to hide underneath the stairs and jump out and yell, when I would hear my dad and sister start coming down the last flight. Only, one time I did it, and it wasn't my dad and my sister at all. It was an elderly couple who must have entered on a lower level ahead of my family. They had to be in their 70s. The woman gasped and clutched her chest, and they almost fell down the stairs. I thought she was having a heart attack. I was mortified. I don't even really remember what I said to them. My dad apologized to them, and then he and my sister proceeded to make fun of me for years. That was almost 30 years ago now, and my face still gets all hot from even thinking about it. Edited to add, I am loving reading the responses here. Sounds like a lot of other kids have accidentally scared the elderly in a similar fashion. Thanks so much for helping me feel not so alone with my elder scaring shame. Story 13. I was in high school and asked a teacher if she was a member of the Mile High Club in front of the class. I had never flown before and was not aware that the Mile High Club was for people who had close relationship in a plane. I was thinking about the memberships where you sit in private rooms to wait for your plane and get free things. Basically wanted to terminate myself a forward. Yes, she was attractive. No, she did not answer. Story 14. When I was like seven or eight, I was staying over at a friend's for a sleepover. Had to go to the bathroom late at night, but it was down a super creepy dark corridor and was too spooked. Friend suggested I pee in one of his baby brother's diapers, and I was so desperate that I did. His mom came in to find me holding a soaked diaper with pour out the water all over the floor whilst he was laughing hysterically. 110 want to pass away every time it comes back to me, which is at least twice a week. Story 15. When I was a stupid kid, I went once to my grandmother with my dad to see her around my birthday. I knew she was going to give me money because she always did. And that's what grandmothers do. I don't come from a wealthy family and I think I was really looking forward this money because I must have wanted something my 10-ish years old myself considered most valuable than a good time with her and because I could be a total piece of cow sometimes. Here comes the end of the afternoon. I don't see my gift, so I straightforward go see her, put my hand like a beggar, and ask her for it directly like, where are my XX euro? 
I must say, I have been in quite a lot of cringy, awkward situations in my life. But this one gets the high spot. And I still remember my dad's face and the feeling of utter shame that followed me the next few days. I never talk about it even to this day because I still feel terribly bad for it 20 years later. But I still remember it like it was yesterday. Story 16. Me and my friend were playing with some robot dog toy or something, but it passed away. Went into my parents' room knowing the dresser beside their bed had a package of batteries. We rummaged through the drawer and accidentally stumbled across my parents' close relationship toy and some dirty magazines. Our immediate idea is to prank my older sister and plant them in her room. Ultimately, we decide that would be too mean, since she wasn't a part of the discovery and it wouldn't be funny to her. We grab the batteries and return to our dog toy. Anyways, long story short, my friend thought it would be funny to plant the dildo and mags in my room. I shouldn't have trusted her, but the second I went to the bathroom, she snuck them under my bed. I didn't realize for the entire weekend. Monday morning at school, she comes up to me dying of laughter and asks what my parents said. I didn't really get what she meant. Then she spilled the beans. My parents' dildo and prohibited photos magazines are under my bed frame. Cue to me running home after school praying to God my parents don't realize what is missing from their bedside drawer. My mom's acting funny when I get home. She asks how my day is. I say fine. She tells me she cleaned my room for me in this really weird tone. My stomach drops and I'm like, fudge, great. My parents think I actively stole and used their dildo. I drop my bag off in my room and look under my bed. And everything is gone. She definitely found the dildo. I was so shy and awkward, I just flipping avoided them for as long as possible. I should have just told them my best friend was pranking me, but the idea of talking to my parents about their dildo made me want to pass away. So I just didn't. So my parents have continued on, to this day, thinking I took their dildo and prohibited photos magazines and hid them under my bed. Edit, thanks for the gold. A little more info for those asking. I'm a girl. My relationship with my parents was awkward for a bit, but unaffected for the most part, my friend definitely was a savage. I intend to tell my parents about it, but they're really shy, quiet people, and they'll get all embarrassed. Also, I am still awkward as hell and don't really want to talk about it. Maybe one day. Story 17. Growing up, my parents really wanted to make sure I wouldn't breathe. Most of my grandparents passed from smoking-related illnesses, so this is understandable. Except they drilled it in my head a little too hard. One day in kindergarten, a classmate was absent. The next day she was there, and she was super sad. We asked her what happened, and she said that her grandma passed away of lung cancer. I told her it served her right. The teacher was not pleased. I apologized the next day as well as a five-year-old could, but oh no, if that hasn't stuck with me since. E, I'd like to think my empathy skills have improved over the years. Glad to see this has sparked some, uh, polite discourse in the replies. And thanks for the gold. Happy to see my social misadventures bring you joy. Story 18. I'm 39 and I still think about my first almost kiss. It was so awkward and embarrassing. I was 11 or 12 and at camp, we were playing spin the bottle. I was a really naive little girl and didn't quite understand what I was getting myself into. The bottle landed on me and I stood up to kiss the older and far more experienced boy in front of me. I essentially unhinged my jaw and opened up my mouth really wide to kiss him. He stepped back and took one look at me and said, No. Story 19. Oh God. When I was like seven or eight, a friend of my parents had a baby. They already had a four-year-old girl too. My dad and I were watching as the other dad showed the four-year-old how to change a nappy. I had recently seen the first Austin Powers movie. So I said in my infinite wisdom, Does that make you horny, baby? Yeah as the four-year-old girl was wiping her baby sister. My dad was mortified. In hindsight, so am I. Edit. Obligatory thanks for the gold. Can't believe this is my highest comment. I've been having an extraordinarily cow time lately, and knowing I've made so many people laugh cringe has put a huge smile on my face. Big thanks to my mom, who I tricked into letting me watch Austin Powers, and my dad, who didn't give a cow until I embarrassed him in front of my friend. As a mum, I look forward to being embarrassed by my kids on the red. Edit 2. Oh, also I forgot to mention, yes, I did it with the Austin Powers accent. And for you Americans, a nappy is a diaper. Edit 3. Special, special thanks to our award speech edits for the nomination. You like me? You really like me? Story 20. I was at a sleepover in middle school. I had gotten new pajamas and everything. I was so excited because I really wanted to be friends with these girls. Woke up in the middle of the night, only to find I had wet myself. I had to sneak into her sister's room where we put our bags to find a change of pants. All I had were jeans. When everyone woke up, I told them I got cold. My mom told me I smelled when I got in the car to go home. I told her their beagle smelled bad and slept with me all night. Edit. Thanks for all the replies. It's nice to know we are all just a bunch of bedwetters. Story 21, 7th grade. Wrote way too much self-insert fanfiction about my cute teachers. Examples. 
cute science team. A terrible story about my self-insert character being a shy student with a deep interest in science. The teacher invites her for a one-on-one -on -one soil sampling expedition in the mountains. Suddenly, a blizzard comes and we have to huddle together in the cave for warmth. And naturally, he begins to see her differently and falls in love with her. Lots of cringy, what makes you different makes you beautiful kind of dialogue in this one. Cute tennis coat wrote an underdog story about him singling out my self-insert character as a clumsy yet hardworking diamond in the rough, training her extra hard in one-on-one -on -one sessions. Soon, she gets so good that she's about to achieve her dream of becoming a state tennis champion. But when my character gets a debilitating arm injury from a drunk driving accident where the drunk driver who hit her passes away, coach helps her find her physical and mental strength again. Also, he falls in love with her. I should add the character wasn't driving. She was too young. She was a pedestrian, and yet somehow the driver passes away. Cute drama teacher. The self-insert character has an amazing gift for acting despite her sloppy and unassuming appearance. The drama teacher goes full Henry Higgins on the protagonist's Eliza Doolittle, turning her into a polished and confident young woman. And yes, the play they're putting on is My Fair Lady 2, which isn't at all too on the nose. After the student who's playing Henry Higgins and his understudy, the protagonist's best friend, get food poisoning from eating the same pizza, the drama teacher is forced to take over his spot on opening night. I had just learned about food's danger zone in class and wanted to share my knowledge that you should never eat a pizza that was left on the counter overnight. After acting together with the self-insert character on that fateful day, he begins to see her through new eyes and falls in love with her. Cute history teacher. I guess history teachers are too boring to be written about, so he got inserted into a totally different role. My self-insert character was a pioneer woman homesteader who crosses paths with him on the fateful. She's a widow who never had a chance to fulfill her dream of having children before her husband passed away of cholera on their long journey to settle in Nebraska. I played a lot of Oregon Trail. He never had a chance to find a wife because he was an escaped indentured servant. Together, they have to rescue the children before they all freeze to death. After some of the kids' parents pass away in the blizzard, the self-insert and teacher-insert characters adopt the orphans, get married in a tree cathedral, a la the Santa Claus has come into town rank and base special, and presumably live happily ever after. It wouldn't have been so bad if it was kept private, but my older sister found the notebook and would cry with laughter about it along with her cool friends. Edit. I am really glad you all are enjoying my terrible stories. I do a lot of freelance copywriting now, terribly unromantic in comparison, and this reminiscing makes me want to dip back into fiction writing a bit. Story 22. Had a sleepover at a girl's house where she shared a bedroom with her younger brother with bunk beds. I was probably about 12 or 13, and unfortunately was one of those kids that still had accidents. Middle of the night, I realized I had won and completely soaked her brother's mattress. I was mortified and couldn't bring myself to tell her mom, who kind of scared me. So I cleaned myself up and put on my regular clothes. I hid my soaked nightshirt and being the genius I was, I found clean sheets and flipped the mattress thinking that will surely hide the evidence. It didn't. He went around telling everyone, and though her and I remained friends, I was never invited to sleep over there again. Edit. Wow. It's kind of awesome to see how many others had similar experiences. Makes it feel just a little less humiliating. Though I'm still not sure how I feel about my first really upvoted comment being about my adolescent lack of bladder control and failed attempt at a literal cover-up lol. Story 23. I was in primary school, year 6 I believe, and I would have been about 11 at the time. One day, the deputy principal was having an intense discussion in his classroom during lunch break. He seemed to be acting as a mediator to sort out a conflict between a group uncomfortable looking kids who were all standing around him. I happened to be using one of the computers in the room nearby and listened in curiously as I overheard bits of whatever drama was unfolding between them. To this day, I have no flipping idea what came over me, but for some reason I decided it was appropriate to walk over, lean down and slam my palms on the teacher's desk like I owned the place, say, so what's going on here, and look around at each of them expectantly like they were actually about to recount the story to me in its entirety. The deputy principal was this stern older guy who was not the type to be messed up with. He just looked at me with the most incredulous look on his face for a couple of seconds and blinked. Wah! None of your business! Everyone stared at me in silence for several seconds, and I walked off sheepishly. I still have no idea what came over me that day. This was not normal behavior for me. I still cringe about it occasionally. Story 24 In middle school, we were doing presentations over basic stuff about different diseases. Just general stuff like symptoms, who's most likely to get it, etc. My group got diabetes, so we got to work figuring it out. We kind of just got the basic idea that you get diabetes from eating a bunch of sugar, so it's only fat people who have it. I don't think I understood type 1 back then. 
I barely do now. So we thought it would be an absolute riot if we made fun of fat people with diabetes in our presentation. So with each of us having huge cow-eating grins on our faces during our presentation, I hit the clicker to go to the next slide, and it's just full of morbidly obese people. I'm like, and this is what a person with diabetes looks like. I was accepting a flipping roar of laughter, but everyone just sat there for what seemed like years. Our teacher didn't do anything. I think she was in shock. Then one girl just said, that's not funny. My dad has diabetes. And we shut the presentation off and sat down. I wanted to flipping pass away. Story 25. I hid from my mother in Macy's or something when I was like seven. I thought I was being so funny as I jumped into different clothes racks. I remember the staff looking for me too, and I hid inside a long jacket as they came by. I was sneaking around for about 20 minutes or so, and I remember making my way back to my mom when I found a security guard talking to her as she started to get upset. He said something like, From what we can tell he's still in the store, he has been running between the coat racks hiding from everyone. That's when she burst out in tears. She yelled my name and I popped out right behind her and said, You got me! She turned around and grabbed me, gave me a huge hug. I will never forget the face the security guard gave me when she hugged me. It was like, Yikes, you stupid kid, you're in big trouble when you get home. It never occurred to me that my mother may have thought that I got kidnapped. 20 years later and I'm still badass at hide and seek. Edit. Wow, this blew up overnight. After reading people's responses, I want to address two things. 1. If your child ever does this, do not smack them at the store or when you get home. I probably deserved it. But my mother actually just sat me down and explained why she was worried and the dangers of doing that in public. She told me that I could have been taken very easily and it's not safe. I explained to her in perfect seven-year-old logic, if nobody can find me, how are they going to kidnap me? She laughed and just made me promise to never hide like that again. Two, I am actually still absurdly good at hiding. I've always had a knack for sneaking by and evading people. Misdirection is key. And yes, I played a lot of Metal Gear Solid and Splinter Cell games. Story 26, shat my pants in the first grade while playing Monopoly on the last day of school before summer break. My teacher kept telling me to hold on when I tried to ask. Long story short, while we were all on the floor playing Monopoly, I shat a cow so bad it lifted me two inches off the ground. It was so bad I got sent home for the day. I still think about it because I'm unsure if I couldn't hold it in any longer or if I did it to spite my teacher. Either way, it was super embarrassing. Story 27. There was this one guy in geometry that was constantly making fun of me. One day, after I couldn't take it anymore, I pulled out my phone and acted like I was talking to snipers who were trained to follow around people who had been mean to me. I still cringe myself into a ball whenever I think about it. Edit. Geez, this was popular. A little more information. I was like 15 or 16 at the time. Way older than I should have been for this level of idiotness. I told the kid that I have people following him and that he should lay off. Or else. He laughed in my face. Oh, and it was in front of a group of people as well. So they all thought I was a dweeb. Story 28. When I was really little, probably third grade, I was in gym class passing a foam dodgeball back and forth with another classmate. I really, really had to pee. In an attempt to avoid peeing myself, I put the dodgeball between my legs, no idea why, and clenched my cheeks. It wasn't enough. I peed my pants and all the urine was absorbed by the foam dodgeball like a sponge. Not wanting to reveal to my classmates that I had just peed my pants, I pretended nothing happened and passed the pour out the water-soaked dodgeball to my partner. He rings the thing out and the pour out the water gets all over his hands, arms, and the floor. He asks, what's this? I told him it was sweat. We passed the piss ball back and forth for the rest of class. Story 29. When I was 11, 12, if I had a crush on someone, I would go find their parents in the phone book, look up the phone number on white pages, find their address, and then in an attempt to impress them, I would repeat back to them their parents' names, home phone number, and address. I was literally a serial stalker, and for some reason no one ever reported me. Edit. I'm a girl, so that's probably why no one thought it was that creepy, but... No, I do not still do this. And yes, I understand it's completely unacceptable. Middle school me was cringy as fudge. I've moved on edit too. My brother just told me he saw this and thought of me. He remembers too. Oh no. Story 30. Oh, cringe. My memory goes like this. I'm in kindergarten. We had a restroom right inside our classroom. One child was allowed in there at a time, understandably. It was group playtime where we were all divided into groups of three, four, and spent some time playing at each station before moving on to the next. I was at the wooden block station, and I had to pee something fierce, so I asked my teacher to use the bathroom. There is another student in there at the moment, so I'm told to wait. In my little child mind, about two hours pass, and I'm on the verge of poured water myself. So what do I decide to do? Sit on the block bin and pee in it. I don't know why this was my solution, but I then proceeded to continue playing as though nothing happened and move on to the next station. 
Like kids noticed, wet blocks for the next group, as if everyone didn't see the giant still wet pee stain on my pants. Nobody ever said anything to me, to my knowledge. Never had a teacher or a parent talk to me about appropriate restroom use or the need to inform someone that I really have to go. But I guarantee that my teacher was pissed about having to clean my pee off those blocks later in the day. Story 31. When I was seven, my stepdad and mom took my brother and I for our 90s classic bowl cuts. Being the astute observer of human interaction I was, I noticed that all the other guys were talking to their barber, so I must also strike up conversation. My topic of choice out of left field. Do your parents keep you up at night because they fart so loud in their bedroom? Mom and Steve are always ripping juicy ones. Cue the record scratching screech to a halt and disbelief that I just put my parents on blast like that, which followed by at least three grown men crying from laughter. The faces my mom and stepdad had on to this day make me cringe. And the fact that they were trapped watching their seven-year-old unpleasant person kid finish his haircut in a barber shop of 15-plus other people haunts me to this day. Because what goes around comes around as a parent, I'm sure. Needless to say, this was the only time my barber did not offer me a dum-dum at the end. Story 32. My cleaning daycare lady got me a sweater on my 12th birthday. And all I said was, is that all? She got a bit sad and said that it is all she could get me. She passed away of cancer when I was 15. And I didn't get a chance to say how sorry I am because I wasn't mature enough. I hope it wasn't such a big deal for her as it later became for me. I was a spoiled brat and couldn't appreciate a gift she wasn't obliged to spend her money on. It is the thing that embarrasses me the most to this day because that is where I failed myself. I behaved like a thorn and not a human being. Since then, I am trying my best to appreciate every little thing someone does for me, regardless of how big or small it is. Let this be my way to say I'm sorry. Story 33. I was like five years old and I heard my dad call my mom a MILF. Obviously, I had no idea with this, but it sounded like a oh no good insult in my five-year-old brain. So a few days later, I'm getting teased at the dinner table by my mom and I'm like, oh yeah! Well, you're a MILF. Everything goes silent and people look at me like, why would you say that? It's burned into my brain and it still hurts. Story 34. When I was about eight years old, we took a field trip to the Field Museum here in Chicago. We had a lunch break and I wandered off to the gift shop to see what they had. I had a huge crush on this girl named Victoria in my class and I saw this ladybug ring for a couple of dollars. I knew she liked ladybugs and I had money my parents gave me to buy something at the shop. So I decided to buy the ring and give it to her. I was really nervous and kept waiting for the right time to do it. I eventually decided to just go for it and walked up to her near the end of the trip. She was with some of her friends, which made me more nervous, but I found the courage to do it. She looked at the ring and laughed. Her friends joined her and she then tossed the ring in the trash. I was completely devastated and tried hard to hold back my tears. Even though I'm over it now, that completely messed up my confidence with girls for a long time. Looking back, I may have embarrassed her too, giving it to her in front of her friends which is why she reacted that way. But whatever the case, it's probably the most embarrassed I have been in my life. Story 35. When my son was in seventh grade, he had a friend over. They clearly had a crush on each other. He came to me after a little bit and said she needed to talk to me in the bathroom. I figured she got her period and needed a pad tampon. When I went in the bathroom, she had a look of sheer panic on her face. Her voice was trembling as she told me she had peed herself. Luckily, my daughter is tall for her age, so I got her a pair of my daughter's underwear and jeans snuck her soiled clothing to the washer, and quickly washed, dried them, and gave them back. Luckily, the jeans were similar, so no one was any the wiser. Poor girl. Story 36. When I was 12, I had to get my first physical for sports. My mother went with me to our family doctor to get the exam. After the turn your head and cough bit, I was very embarrassed and thought it would be good to say something funny. The first thing that popped into my head was a scene from Road Trip, where a guy gets a nurse to milk his prostate for donation, and he seemed to enjoy it. Being 12, I had no idea what that meant, so I blurted out after pulling up my pants. I hope you're not going to milk my prostate now. My mother's face went white, and the doctor took a step back with a horrified look as he glanced to my mom and back to me. My mother quickly grabbed me and pushed me outside, apologizing profusely. On the ride home, I got the talk, and when I was informed as to what milk my prostate meant, I could have passed away from embarrassment. I had to continue to see that doctor until I moved away eight years later. Story 37 I bothered a girl for three years straight with my love, including following her to classes, trying love letters, poems in front of her friends, essays. The most cringy was I befriended a guy in her apartment just to celebrate the festival with her. We went together to ask her for joining us. She instantly shut the door in my face. We're good friends now, although something good came out of that. Story 38. My mom and dad had a lot of pet names for each other. Honey, pumpkin, lovey, etc. And I love to play dress up, pretending to be my mom and imitate the things she said. One night, when they thought I was sleeping, 
I overheard my parents arguing and she called him a rat illegitimate child. Never having heard this, I thought it was a made-up love word like pookie. My dad comes to pick me up from daycare maybe a week later. I'm playing house. He comes in and still playing a mom, I scream for all my classmates and their parents to hear, How was your day, rat illegitimate child? Story 39. Boy, do I have an embarrassing story. In elementary school for PE, we were playing sharks and lifeguards with that huge parachute circle thing that was the source of all happiness in elementary school. Something like five sharks were inside the parachute to start, and the rest of the class, except for a few lifeguards, were along the circle with their legs and feet inside the parachute. Then, when the game started, the sharks tried to sneak up and grab your legs and pull you into the parachute. If you were lucky enough, one of the lifeguards would come and pull from the outside of the parachute to save you. Anyways, now that you know what the game is about, now I can tell my story. I was on the outside with of the parachute, hoping I wouldn't get sucked into the parachute when some person comes along and instead of grabbing my legs or my feet, grabs my shorts and proceeds to pull me in as hard as possible. So I yell for a lifeguard. The lifeguard comes over and tries to pull me back from being pulled into the parachute. Meanwhile, I'm there defenseless with both of my arms being used to pull me out, both of my legs being pulled inward toward the parachute. I felt like I was Mr. Incredible in Syndrome's layer being stretched until I come apart. I, to this day, still have no clue who was under the parachute, but whoever it was pulled my shorts right off and took them into the parachute not to be seen for what seemed like an eternity. Meanwhile, the lifeguard was still pulling, so when my shorts flew off, I got instantly pulled out of the parachute to then be laughed at by my class with me, sitting out in the open with my white arse underwear with my shorts nowhere in sight. I'm probably the only one who still remembers this, but it's still pretty embarrassing to me to this day. Story 40. I got diarrhea really bad when I was a kid. Thought it was over, so I went to my best friend's house. We were playing with Legos when I hit me. Sweat dripped from my brows. My hands felt far away and very cold. And in my stomach, there was a weight like that of an enormous anchor pulling what felt like a bowling ball. I started running. I burst through the bathroom door and all hell broke loose. An unholy torrent of cow burst out of my body, not unlike a year-old lasagna being fired from an air cannon. By some miracle, my boxers managed mostly to contain this monstrosity. I knew they were too far gone. I had only moments before the acidity had started to ear through the cotton. I panicked. I tried to flush them. They went down after about ten attempts. I tried to wipe my legs and lower back and pants clean, hoping that by some miracle they wouldn't notice. They did. I lied that I just needed pants, but my underwear were fine. I don't get the logic either, but I was eight sure me. My friend's dad gave me sweatpants to wear and took us bowling. A few days later, my parents got a phone call. I'd clogged the toilet with my underwear. They had to get the pipes replaced. That meant cutting out a section of the wall. I had to write them an apology letter, and I didn't get Christmas because my parents were paying to fix my damage. And that is my worst embarrassment. Story 41. When I was probably about six or seven, we went to visit my mom's best friend. Her friend had kids slightly older than me and my sister. Her friend's daughter was showing signs of having an eating disorders at a scarily young age. And I had overheard my mom talk about this with my dad. She was angry at her friend for not noticing how much her own daughter was eating. How she would open the fridge and grab handfuls of anything she could find. Five minutes before dinner. A conversation that was in private and meant no harm, I overheard. So we are up staying at their house, and this girl annoys me. Can't remember what she did, but I had issues with my anger back then, so it was probably quite tame, but I was mad. I turn and tell at her calling her all sorts of names, mainly calling her fat. She runs off, and both my mom and her friend come over to tell me off. My mom grabs my wrist and very sternly tells me to apologize and that I should call her fat. I, a stupid, angry seven-year-old, then say, But you call her fat all the time. You even said it in the car on our way here. My mom freezes. Her friend has a look of shock on her face. All I remember is her asking my mom, Did you really say that? And them walking off, leaving me to realize what I had just done. The thought of this so embarrassing moment makes me cringe super hard. She's still friends with her, and they sometimes bring the story up if they want me to pass away inside. Story 42. I threw up all over a classmate's head and face. Fourth grade, really mean teacher, and I was really sick. She wouldn't let me go to the nurse because I looked fine. We used to have this break after lunch where we sat with our heads down for an hour, and she said if I still didn't feel good after then, maybe I could be excused. Well, about 15 minutes in my mouth starts watering, and I feel super nauseous. And she kind of embarrassed me previously, so I was debating asking again when the rumble became too strong, and I knew I was about to blow chunks. Just as I quickly stood up and turned to get out of my seat in an attempt to sprint to the trash can, hot ham and cheese and chocolate milk was expelled violently in a projectile fashion all over my neighbor's head and face. This classmate was the cool kid in class, and I was called Barf Simpson for the rest of the year. Story 43. 
Better Nate than Lieber. When I was in grade school, we had to do an attendance call every morning, and it was the usual Johnny Smith here routine. Anyway, one of my friends decided to be extra special, and instead of saying here, they would say present. Now, eight-year-old me, for some reason, thought he was saying president, and somehow thought that this meant that during roll call, you don't say here, but instead you yell out what you want to be when you grow up, and my friend wanted to be president. What an ambitious guy, but I didn't want to miss out just in case it worked. So when it's my turn, I go ahead and yell out, race car driver. To this day, I can still feel the stares of the entire class. Story 44. Went to school feeling super sick. I told my mom who was doing at home daycare looking after eight, ten kids by herself. Gotta love the ADS. Anyways, she thought I was making it up to not have to go to school. During recess playing on the playground, I was running through the forested area and tripped on a root. As if in slow motion, my body flew through the air, floating majestically. Then wham, I hit the flipping ground and due to the immense amount of momentum, yep, you guessed it, I cow my pants. And I mean, I royally soiled my pants. My stomach flu was actually watery diarrhea and another colossal fudge up was that I don't wear underwear. Anyways, I walked all the way back to the school. Kids asking me what happened. I said I fell in a giant mud puddle, but the stench alone could have terminated a buffalo. Anyways, long story short, my mom couldn't come get me because she was looking after the daycare kids. So the neighbor's son had to come get me. She told him to bring some garbage bags with him to cover his seat. Man, oh man. That was the most embarrassing moment of my life. Story 45. In eighth grade, I went on my crush's Insta profile, scrolled all the way done and commented, I love you, then quickly deleted it. A few minutes later, I realized that he would still get the notification. Killer off the rose commented, I love you. I got a text from him later that night saying, did you comment on my Instagram? I replied, ha ha, yeah, my sister commented that sorry. Oof, I try not to think about it. Story 46. Just some backstory for this, I was an early bloomer as a kid. So by like grade four, I already was starting to have balls. It was gym in grade five in front of my whole class. I was never very active in gym class, plus we weren't allowed to change for gym. So I was wearing a strapless dress with no bra. So we are playing baseball or something similar and somehow a miracle happens. I catch the ball. I look around and everyone is looking at me. I look down and my dress has slipped, exposing my chest to the whole class. I quickly pulled it up and no one ever said anything. But I saw the look the teacher gave me. That's how I flashed my whole fifth grade class. It keeps me up at night. Story 47. My friend told me that saying give me a blowjob meant tell me a joke. Or something innocent like that. I found my eight-year-old self saying it out loud to four of my sister's friends. There was silence. There were no blowjobs. Unsettling to this day. Another time, this guy pulled a chair from under me just as I was about to sit, and I landed on the floor. This was at a dinner somewhere by the pool, and I was probably 12. To avenge this, I saw him standing next to the pool and thought I'd push him inside the pool. I went for it, except he moved, and I lost my footing, resulting in me in the water wearing a suit. I was very, very mad at myself. I once got slapped by a flipping monkey while I was trying to retrieve a ball that was under the tree that he was sitting on next to his food plate. I'll tell you this, monkeys have a lot of strength, and they are very, very quick. I was once texting a friend saying how annoyed I was at Mike. I sent the whole text to Mike who was sitting next to me. I was wearing pants that were too loose on the waist for me and I fell flashing a great number of people. Need I go on? Edit. Let's do some more. This isn't childhood, but I once took a customer out for dinner. We were joined by a friend of the customer who clearly had a drinking problem. He ended up having me drink a little too much and I ended up blacking out. When I came to, the first thing I did was puke all over the table and the customer's friend. The customer took a napkin and cleaned my face. The next day in the office, the friend who I also puked on showed up wearing the same shirt. The customer and I exchanged this terrible look, and turns out he was too wasted to remember anything. But we reminded him to ruin his day. I was 19. At Just recently, a doctor put his hand forward to check my pulse, and I offered my hand in handshake. My friend's dad wanted this box moved, but he said it was too heavy and asked our help. I said I can do it solo. As soon as I got it off the ground, it fell through breaking my pinky in the process. The box had china in it, which was promptly damaged too. I earned no points that day and broke the first bone in my life. When I first started driving, I saw this girl in the car next to me, and my God, she was beautiful. We were approaching a light, so we were slowing down, and to my amazement, she turned and smiled at me. As I was still smiling back, I was abruptly stopped by the power of a parked truck. My hood went right under as it grazed, eventually stopping more than halfway through. Thank fudge it did. The truck had no damage whatsoever, and as I stepped out, he gave me the finger and left. The girl was gone too. Her smile cost a lot. Edit 3.0. I am grateful that I was able to make so many of you laugh today. Embarrassing though they may be, I am always happy to make others laugh with these stories. Story 48. 
When I was in 11th grade, I became really close with a girl on my lacrosse team. Since her parents were divorced, she usually spent the night at my house once a weekend. One time, she finally invited me over to her mom's house where her younger brother and sister were also staying that weekend. She had just given me the tour of the house and left to go to the bathroom while I changed to swim. To this day, I think it's hilarious to scare people. So naturally, I hid in her closet waiting for her to come back. Except it wasn't her closet. It wasn't her room at all. I actually was hiding in her younger sister's closet. All the bedrooms in the house were generic like guest bedrooms since the kids usually stayed with their dad. I just assumed my friend left me alone in her room. When I heard her come back from the bathroom, I waited 30 seconds and opened the double door closet with a loud boo. Her little sister screamed, started crying, and ran out of the room. I was mortified. I had to explain to my friend and her mom why I decided to hide in the closet. I still had to spend the rest of the night there and I was never invited back. Fast forward seven years and I am a long-term substitute teacher for the district I went to. I've just finished graduate school and I'm extremely nervous to be subbing, especially because you never know how the kids will act. I was taking attendance for the 12th grade class I was going to be teaching for the next few months when I saw the name of the sister on the roster. The whole three months I never mentioned the closet situation and I hoped she didn't remember it. On the last day of school, she asked me in front of the entire class, Why were you hiding in my closet? I wanted to pass away. Story 49 when I was five or six, I thought it would be a good idea to feed the bees by putting honey on a flower. When my mom wasn't looking, I stole the honey bottle and dumped it all over one flower. Sadly, no bees came. I thought it meant that I was commanding the bees. A year later, I was trying to show off in front of my brothers that I was fearless. So we walked over to this ground beehive and I stomped on it. Bees swarmed everywhere. And while my brothers ran, I yelled, I am the king of the bees. I got a lot of bee stings. Story 50. I remember asking my mom, why do people get married when I was five? And she told me that when two people love each other, they can spend their lives living together. That made sense. So later, I remember watching a wedding proposal on TV and thought to myself that I loved my mom and didn't mind living with her forever. So that night we had guests overs and I found some flowers and in the middle of their dinner conversation said, Mom, do you want to marry me? Let's just say they let me know about it even today. Story 51. When I was in sixth grade, my friends wanted to watch Children of the Corn. I begged them not to, but they did it anyways. I was terrified to get up in the middle of the night later on, but I had to poop so bad. My friend had a cat in her room, and I decided to just poop on the floor and blame it on the cat. Clearly didn't make sense, and her mom came in the next morning and asked what the hell happened. Everyone was confused. I played dumb and then said, you, the cat must have pooped. She clearly didn't buy it and pulled me aside and said that I am too old to be doing things like that and told me I can't come over again.